Hi, this is Kristen, I'll just Kristen, and welcome to my channel where I talk about And I'm Shirley. Science fiction and fantasy books and the related awards. And today we have a special guest. My daughter Julie she wants to hang out with me, so here she is. Um, I guess it's her turn. I've had Rafi on here once or twice. Um, all right, it's my April wrap up. I can't believe it's already May, but I had a great reading month. I finished seven books. I also DNF seven books and I started some others that I'm still working on. I, at the beginning of the month, was working on a novella challenge. I wanted to be able to rank a lot of novellas and kind of predict and react to the Hugo nominations, which were announced this month. Um, I'll link that ranked video below if you're interested. But that's also the reason that I have so many DNFs this month. I tried to read as many novellas as I possibly could, and because of that, there were a bunch that just weren't really interesting to me. They weren't really my cup of tea, and so I kind of ditched them pretty quickly. So I will maybe go over my list of DNFs first. And Onyx Pages recently uploaded a video talking about mm -hmm. DNF as a term mm -hmm. and how they're uncomfortable with it because it sounds so final and et cetera, et cetera. I'll link her video below. I thought it was a really thoughtful discussion and it made me think about my DNF process. I actually have three separate shelves on Goodreads for my DNFs because I don't always DNF in the sense that this is done totally forever. So I literally, the names of my DNF shelves are may finish in the future. Like it's just not something I want to read right now, but I plan to pick it up again for whatever reason, or I might pick it up. It's not like I plan to, but I can see maybe. It's like, I'm not like hating it, totally done, but. So on that shelf this month, I added No Man's Land by AJ Fitzwater, which was a novella. And it just, it got kind of slow paced and I just wasn't interested and there were other things that were exciting me. But this is the one novella out of all the ones that I DNF'd that I do still think about from time to time. And I'm, I'm thinking about maybe picking this up in the future when I feel like it. Um, I can see that happening. And my other one that I have on this list is... Master of Poisons by Andrea Hairston, which I, I don't know if I'll get back to this, but I can see it happening, maybe, potentially. So that's my May Finish in the Future DNF category, and then I have no plans to finish. Like, I just... You know, maybe I even will finish it in the future, but right now I don't see it happening. I, I'm pretty much totally Can done. I that one? So on this list, you? you like the, because it's pretty? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this one is and pretty. And it looks like it's another Anna and Elsa book. It does look like an Anna and Elsa book, huh? Yeah. So on this list are Moon Tangled by Stephanie Burgess, Fly Away by Kathleen Jennings, Burning Roses by S.L. Huang, and then Riot Baby by Tochi Onibuchi. Who's Riot Baby? It's the name of a book. So those were all novellas. Tochi Maduchi? It's a rhyme. On my No Plans to Finish shelf. Also, I put Persephone Station by Sienna Light on here. It just wasn't working for me. I talked a little bit about it in one of my weekly wrap-ups. It just... It just wasn't working for me. It was too many point of views without enough information to feel invested, and I didn't really like any of the characters. So I don't know. I've heard a lot of other people feeling pretty lukewarm about this one, so I didn't feel like I needed to press on because it was going to be amazing if I like gave the investment. It was just kind of like no one was saying it was worth it. So there it is. Please let me know if you did love this, and I should press on. I will reconsider my TNF status for it, but... Yeah, those were all of my no plans to finish. And then the last category for DNFs is will finish, but on hold. Like, I mm -hmm. definitely plan to finish this, but I'm just not going to finish it right mm -hmm. this second. I'm going to plan for something in the future. Um, and the only one I have on here from this month, actually, I don't even think it's from this month, The Midnight Bargain by C.L. Polk. Um, I really, really was enjoying this. I got to about 80% and then my library loan oh. ran out. And I was going to just finish it by eye reading because it's on Hoopla, but then I realized I was enjoying the audio version of this so much that I am just going to wait until I can get the audio version from the library again, which is going to be still quite a while. Let me actually check how much longer it's going to be. Well, I still have four weeks, so it might it might come pretty soon. Get that one. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. The Midnight Bargain. Because I was, I was, really, I was having so much fun with that one. 
All right, so the books that I finished this month are Road Out of Winter by Alison Stein, which I have... That one, Mama. I have a dedicated review for that one, which I will link below. It was really good. This one won the Philip K. Dick Award. It was... Put that one. You need to stop talking, lovey. It was character-driven. It was atmospheric. It was really immersive. Um, so I definitely recommend it. It was grim, though, so... Not not exactly light reading. <laughs> I also finished Fledgling by Octavia E. Butler. This was the audiobook I was listening to in the car with my husband. And I think that this is... Now that I've read this book, I don't have any more books left by Octavia Butler left to read. I think there might be a short story collection. But other than that, I've read all of them now. The Complete Works of Octavia Butler, who is a legend and amazing. And I've thoroughly enjoyed... Um, I think I've listened to all of her books now in audiobook. This is, she's kind of an author that my husband introduced me to. Pretty, like, while we were dating, I think. He had Blood Child, her short story collection, and he lent it to me. And I was blown away. Like, I just loved it. The stories are so creative and thought-provoking, like, super thought-provoking. And she explores these themes of oppression and slavery and just all sorts of, like, really cool stuff. And so I fell in love with her, and then Adrian, my husband, I think hadn't read her novels yet, and he had really loved Blood Child also, so it started to be our thing that we did together in the car. We would listen to all of her books on audiobooks. So we started with Parable of the Sower, which was incredible, and then the sequel to that, and then Lilith Brood, and then Pattern Master series, and now we've listened to Fledgling, and... The moral of this whole story is you need to go read Octavia Butler. Her books are amazing. Out of all of them, I think Fledgling was my least favorite, but it was still really good. It was like a three-star read for me. It talks in the end kind of about some, some stuff that kind of parallels injustice in our own society. But I do feel like out of all of her books, this one probably goes the least deep in that regard. All of her other books really, really talk a lot about different systems of oppression. Other books talk. With words that you read. It's an expression. They're not literally talking, but they're saying things with their words because their books are just bunches of words written down. Yeah? yeah. So, yeah, she talks about systems of oppression and um, just the complicated relationships that people have in those systems. How, you know, you would think that in a system in which a person is being oppressed, they would only have hatred or resentment for their oppressor, which really explores and looks at how that's not really true, that we can love oppressors and have complicated feelings. She also talks a lot about empathy, like hyper-empathy is actually a feature in Parable of the Sower, but themes of empathy are throughout her books. Um, and they're just, she has such a creative mind. I just definitely just go read all of her books. So anyways, I also finished A Memory Called Empire by Arkady Martin. This was really enjoyable. It won the Hugo Award last year for Best Novel. It was the debut novel by Arkady Martin, so double congratulations to her. Um, I really enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. I don't think this is going to be one of my favorite all-time books, but I did really enjoy this. And I, I bet he read this with a couple of real-life friends. I mean, obviously we weren't meet, meeting in real life, but we chatted over the internet, and that definitely made it a lot more enjoyable. It was really fun to chat with them, so shout out to Bridget and Kate. Um, let's do it again sometime. I also finished The Stone Weta by Octavia Cade. This was a novella. Well, technically a novel, but kind of on the borderline between novel and novella. It's a short novel, but a long novella. I don't... Anyways, I talked a lot about this in some of my weekly wrap-ups. I'm not going to go there, but suffice it to say, I really enjoyed it, but then I got bored, and I think it would have worked better just staying um, a short story, which I believe it started out either as a short story or a novelette. So... Yeah, those are my thoughts. I, I thought it was too long. It didn't need to be as long as it was. Um, I also finished The Trials of Coley, which is the third and final book in the Rampart Trilogy by M.R. Carey. I thoroughly enjoyed this. It was so fun. And I think, you know, reading the third book in a trilogy, 
it's such a treat because I feel like I'm constantly reading the first book in the series and it's like all of this set up and it just it very often drags so that by the time you get to the third book it's like oh my gosh we finally just don't need to worry as much about all the setup and all of this description and all of this. So it was great. It, it had really, really um, compelling, interesting, mysterious things that you wanted to figure out what was going on. It was so immersive. I was so invested. I was satisfied with the way it concluded. Although I, you know, had some mild criticisms of the way it was concluded, but I was satisfied. I have a dedicated review video for the whole trilogy, which I will also link below. I also finished The Tower of Mud and Straw by Yaroslav Barsukov. This was a nominee, a Nebula nominee for novella, and I ended up listening to it. You can listen to it for free uh, at Metamoro. <laughs> Hang on. It's like Metamorphosis, but it's, it's Metaphorosis, I think. I will link it below so that you can listen to it too if you're interested. It was pretty good. I also finished Prosper's Demon by KJ Parker, and this is also a novella. I love this one. I'm surprised I haven't heard anyone, like nobody else talking about it. I really feel like this was a better novella than a lot of the ones that did actually get nominated for the Hugos and Nebulas. It was really quick. It was snappy. It was a first person point of view. Very, it reminded me so much of Murderbot. Although this character was not nearly as lovable as Murderbot, but a very similar style of narrative. Um, so I do recommend it. Definitely check that out. Let's talk about books that I am currently reading. I got very lucky and the Desolation, a Desolation Column piece came from, I had it on hold from the library and it literally arrived the day after I finished a memory called Empire. So I am just so over the moon about that. So I've been, I went straight from one to the other and I'm enjoying A Desolation Called Peace just as much, if not more, than A Memory Called Empire. I really like the problem and the conflict in this story more than I liked the kind of murder mystery of the first book. Um, not that I didn't like the murder mystery, but um, A Desolation Called Peace is more about aliens, which I just find more intriguing and I, I like alien stories, so <laughs> I'm enjoying this one a lot in that regard. It did start out just a little bit confusing because several more point of views were added and I just felt a little bit lost at first, but um, I'm definitely, I'm over the halfway point now and I'm not feeling lost at all now. I'm just really enjoying it and I can't wait to see how it's gonna end up. I think I'm going to end up liking this just as much or more than A Memory Called Empire. Um, I'm also eye reading Every Heart a Doorway, which is the first Wayward Children book by Shannon McGuire. Um, I'm enjoying it. I barely started it. I don't have nearly as many opportunities to eye read as I do to listen to audiobooks. So generally my audiobooks go much faster than my eye reading. But I am enjoying it. It's a novella, so I expect it to go pretty quickly once I do focus on it a bit more. And I am kind of reading this because Come Tumbling Down, which is number five in the series, did get nominated by the Hugo Awards in the novella category and it was the only novella that I hadn't read yet so I want to read all of those I'll get to them I'm also working on Machine Hood by S.B. Divya I'm also I reading this one and this one is kind of a struggle to get into at least for me there's just like a ton of action and description and detail and it's all kind of cool but it's just a lot it's it's a lot and I'm having a hard time feeling really invested like I don't I don't care about these characters yet I don't really care about what's going on yet and I've heard that it gets like really good after the halfway point so fingers crossed I'm expecting this to really deliver because right now I'm kind of struggling and I need to I'm gonna push through and I need to like hurry up and push through because I think my library loan is gonna be due soon I think I only have like three more days or something horrible like that let me see Oh my God, <laughs> one day, six hours. I really need to read this today. <laughs> okay, I might I might not accomplish that. Um, that's okay, that's okay. I also started Remote Control as an audiobook by Nadia Korafor. I am currently prioritizing A Desolation Called Peace, um, but I'm sure I'll get back to it. 
And that's pretty much all I'm reading. I'm still like chipping away at The Doors of Eden by Adrian Tchaikovsky. I think I might have read three pages this past month. I do want to finish it. I just, it might be in five years. <laughs> All right, so here's my statistical breakdown of just how diverse my reading was this month. It was a good month for white authors and characters. Um, so I had about five um, white authors and only, I think, one. Dang, this crap is hard to read. <laughs> one um, person of color who was an author. Oddly enough, most of my main characters were people of color written by white authors. So that's curious. Um, there were, you know, almost half and half straight and LGBTQ plus characters. Um, as I said in my last monthly wrap up, I have decided to no longer keep track of whether an author is straight versus LGBTQ plus just because, um, you know, an author might not be out and sometimes I'm just not really sure and it's kind of hard to tell. And I don't know. And I failed to say in my last month's video that um, a lot of this thinking was inspired by N.K. Jemison's Twitter thread that she had on the same topic. So I want to give credit where credit is due. It wasn't totally just my own thoughts. It was inspired by her. Um, also, I had more male authors than usual, but I still had more female authors and a similar number of male and female main characters. I read zero translated works, and obviously that means that they were all originally in English. So my uh, ethnic breakdown is pretty boring this month. I had one black author, a few black main characters, and then everyone else was white. I really, I am seeing that I don't read very many Latina authors or main characters, so if you know any that you want to recommend to me, I would appreciate that. All right, finally, I want to kind of announce my novelette challenge. This is, I mean, challenge is like giving it too much dignity. I'm just going to read one novelette a week um, for however long that takes until I've read all of the novelettes that were nominated for Hugo Awards and then Nebula Awards. So I'm going to start this week with The Inaccessibility of Heaven by Elliot de Boudard. I picked this one only because I'm just very curious about Elliot de Boudard as an author. I read one novella by her and I didn't think that novella in and of itself was absolutely outstanding amazing, but I did really enjoy it and find it really intriguing, and I just, I'm very curious about her as an author now. I want to read more of her stuff, so might as well start here. You can read it for free at uncannymagazine.com, which I will link below. Please join me. I'm going to talk about it in my weekly wrap-up every week, and then also announce which one I'm reading next. So I would love it if you want to join me in this challenge and read the same ones at the same time as me, and we can discuss it in the comments or wherever um or i'd love to like just hear you include it in your videos if you're also a booktuber and hear your thoughts um and then once i've read all of the nominees i will definitely be making a ranked video of like my favorites and least favorites and i'd love to see anyone else who wants to join me in doing that also that is it thank you so much for watching bye